In soil and water conservation engineering course, you will be learning the following topics. Introduction to soil and water conservation engineering, soil erosion, forms of water erosion, gully erosion, universal soil loss equation, rainfall erosivity and soil erodibility, contour and graded bunds, bench terraces, grass waterways and wind erosion. The current chapter is Introduction to Soil and Water Conservation Engineering. Let us discuss the status of soil erosion. Globally, around 2.4 tons per hectare of soil is eroded every year. 33% of the soils on this earth are already degraded and it is estimated that by the year 2050, around 90% could become degraded. This is quite alarming. In India, the average annual rate of soil erosion is 16.35 tons per hectare. India has been experiencing various levels of soil erosion, with some regions facing more severe problems than others. States in the Himalayan region, Western Ghats, parts of northeastern states are particularly vulnerable due to their hilly terrain and heavy rainfall. Because of the anthropogenic activities, the erosion rate has increased considerably. It has increased by at least 10 times. Why should we conserve soil? Soil conservation is vital for preserving agricultural productivity, safeguarding water quality and maintaining ecosystem health. By preventing soil erosion and by reducing the sedimentation in water bodies, we may ensure sustainable farming and we may be able to protect the biodiversity. Soil is the most fundamental and essential foundation for life. It is indispensable for human survival. It plays a crucial role in ensuring food security and a healthy environment. We fail to recognize the significance of soil until we witness a decline in food production. With increasing population, it is necessary to increase the production. And for that, we need to preserve soil in its natural state. We may need to adopt agronomical measures or engineering measures to conserve soil. What are the key water conservation challenges in India? India faces several conservation challenges, including population growth, inefficient water use in agriculture, water pollution and declining groundwater levels. Rapid urbanization and industrialization has put pressure on the limited water resources. Agriculture is the major consumer of water. But agriculture employs irrigation techniques which are often inefficient. Water pollution from industrial and domestic sources has further degraded the water quality. Often the water which is extracted from ground is unregulated and it is contributing significantly to falling water tables. So poor irrigation efficiency, frequent droughts, groundwater exploitation, seawater intrusion, non-point and point source pollution of rivers and increasing demand of water because of large population are some of the key water conservation challenges faced by India. What are the benefits of conserving soil and water? There are numerous benefits. Let us discuss them. By conserving soil in its natural state, we are ensuring that the productivity remains satisfactory and reliance on chemical fertilizers can be reduced. By implementing water and soil conservation measures, we may ensure that the erosion remains controlled and thereby we may protect the farmland and also reduce water pollution. We are also safeguarding water resources against uh, sedimentation and pollutant runoff. 
we can minimize the effects which are associated with floods by minimizing the surface runoff. We may even participate in biodiversity conservation by sustaining diverse plants and animal life. By conserving soil and water, we may even combat the climate change because it can help in sequestering carbon dioxide. So, we will contribute in preserving the water supply for the present as well as future generation. Also, the groundwater can be recharged. There will be replenishment of the aquifers. There are several economical benefits associated with conserving soil and water also. And the significant benefit is related to uh, increase in agricultural productivity and reduction in damages associated with floods. Soil conservation practices play an important role in achieving sustainable agriculture by implementing methods such as no-till farming, crop rotation, terracing, cover cropping, farmers can prevent soil erosion, maintain soil fertility and reduce the need for chemical inputs. These practices will provide healthy, resilient soils that support high crop yields year after year while also protecting the environment and reducing the carbon footprint of agriculture. Sustainable agriculture ensures long-term food security, it preserves the land for future generations and it mitigates the environmental impact of farming contributing to the overall well-being of both farmers and society. So, these conservation practices need to be adopted in order to achieve sustainable agriculture. Let us move on to the next slide. These are some of the erosion control measures. Contour cultivation, terracing, wind breaks. In contour cultivation, crops have been grown along the contours. It helps in reducing the speed of the surface runoff and thereby reduces soil loss. A uh, hilly land has been converted into bench-like platforms in terracing. It also helps in conserving soil and water. You can see the physical barrier along the perimeter of the field. These are wind breaks. It helps in slowing down the speed of the wind and thereby reduces soil erosion. So these erosion control measures definitely helps in preserving the fertile topsoil and thereby it protects the farmland and soil structure. It also prevents sediment laden runoff, preserving water quality and aquatic habitats. We will be learning about several such erosion control measures in this course. Soil and water conservation practices can definitely protect water quality. By adopting groundwater recharge and rainwater harvesting, we can ensure that the water does not get contaminated. Polluted water affects aquatic ecosystems as well as human water supplies. So we need to adopt these kind of measures in order to conserve water as well as to protect its quality. If you are using roof rainwater harvesting method, it should be ensured that the roof is properly cleaned before the water is allowed to enter the tank. Sometimes it is recommended to flush the first or the second rain first and the second rainfall events, and then the water is allowed to enter the tank. So the foreign particles may get settled in the tank and clean water can be used for drinking as well as for irrigation purposes. Soil conservation measures can definitely help in mitigating the effect of flood. It promotes infiltration and reduces the velocity of overland flow. You can see that burns have been constructed here and a temporary dam has been constructed on this gully. It helps in reducing the intensity of flood. 
it can drastically reduce the volume and speed of water which is flowing over land during heavy rainfall events if we can reduce the volume and speed of water flowing over land during heavy rainfall events and thereby we can um, have a relief from flood Soil and water conservation efforts can also help in preserving the biodiversity by protecting the habitats. Healthy ecosystems will cause pollination, pest control and cycling of nutrients. It will sustain diverse plant and animal life. So we can protect the natural landscapes, wetlands, riparian zones which will provide resilient ecosystems that adapt to environmental changes. Soil conservation measures can help in mitigating climate change by sequestering carbon dioxide. Sequestering carbon dioxide means capturing and storing it to prevent its release into the atmosphere. This process is a key component of carbon capture and storage technologies. By sequestering carbon dioxide, our aim is to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and thereby combat climate change. So practices like uh, agroforestry, no-till farming and cover cropping will definitely increase the soil carbon sequestration. Conservation efforts will help in offsetting the greenhouse gas emissions and by storing carbon in soil we will be able to combat global warming. By conserving water, we may ensure sustainable water resources for the present as well as future generations. The increase in population and economic activities demand responsible use of water. Agriculture is the main consumer of water. So we need to start adopting practices which are oriented towards water saving. We may need to adopt micro irrigation systems. We may need to adopt water harvesting structures. In households, we may adopt roof rainwater harvesting system in which the first rain is allowed to be drained. So by conserving water, we may provide drinking water, water for irrigation, sanitation and industrial needs. Balancing human requirements and ecological well-being is achieved through water conservation. By implementing soil and water conservation methods, we are promoting recharge of groundwater. Groundwater is an important fresh water source. Healthy soils will allow the rainwater to infiltrate and it helps in replenishing the underground reservoirs. Proper land management like natural vegetation and less impervious surfaces increases the rate of recharge. Groundwater recharge ensures that there is sustainable water supply for wells. There are several benefits that can be delivered by adopting soil and water conservation practices. For farmers, by conserving the soil in its natural state, we are helping in increasing the crop yield and we are also reducing the input costs which helps in increasing the long term productivity which contributes to improved economic viability. So agriculture is benefited to a great extent by uh, applying this soil and water conservation measures. On a broader scale, effective soil and water conservation measures can help in reducing those costs which are associated with flood damage, repair, water treatment and ecological restoration. 
Sustainable land use practices can help in supporting the local economies by promoting ecotourism and creating even green jobs which are related to conservation efforts. Let us have an overview of some of the topics that you will be learning in this course. Soil erosion. It is a process where soil is detached, transported and deposited by erosive agents. Remember these three stages. Detachment, transportation and deposition of soil particles by erosive agents. Major types are water erosion and wind erosion. What are the causes and effects of erosion? There are natural causes and human causes. Natural causes include rain, wind, glaciers, whereas the human activities which cause erosion include deforestation, agriculture and construction. Now what are the effects of erosion? The main effects are loss of the fertile topsoil which will result in decreased agricultural productivity. Other effects include water pollution and habitat destruction. Let us briefly learn about various forms of water erosion. Water erosion is the erosion caused by water. Splash erosion, sheet erosion, rill erosion, gully erosion and bank erosion are some of the forms of water erosion. Splash erosion is the first form of water erosion. It occurs when the raindrops hit the soil surface which causes the soil particles to detach and be splashed away leading to small scale soil loss. These detached particles are carried away by sheet of water. A thin film of water will be flowing over the ground which will carry away this detached soil particles. So uniform removal of thin layer of soil over a large area due to flow of water across the surface is sheet erosion. If sheet erosion is neglected, it may gradually form small rills. Rills are small shallow channels which form on the soil surface due to concentration of water flow. Gradually the rills become larger and larger. The depth increases, the width increases. So development of deep and wide channels are gullies. They are caused on the landscape by intense and concentrated water flow often resulting from continuous rill erosion. So if rill erosion is neglected, gully erosion can happen. Bank erosion. It happens along the river banks or edges of the stream where the flowing water erodes the bank, resulting in loss of soil and sediment deposition on the downstream part. If the rills are neglected, they become larger in size and form gullies. It is caused by concentrated runoff. Gully erosion is the severe and concentrated erosion of soil creating deep and wide channels due to intense water flow leading to significant soil loss and landscape alteration. You may need to adopt either temporary or permanent measures to control gully erosion. Some of the control measures have been listed here. By planting vegetative cover, we can stabilize the soil. By building check dams or terraces, the flow of water can be reduced. By, you may either use stones or concrete structures to control the formation of gullies. Universal Soil Loss Equation this equation is a widely used mathematical model that estimates the soil erosion caused by water. It takes into account various factors such as rainfall, soil characteristics, topography, land use and erosion control practices to predict soil loss in terms of mass per unit area. 
This equation provides a valuable tool for assessing and managing soil erosion in various environmental and agricultural contexts, aiding in the development of strategies to reduce soil degradation and maintaining soil health. A equal to R K L S C P. R is the rainfall erosivity factor. A is the estimated average annual soil loss in tons per acre or tons per hectare. R erosivity by rainfall. K is the soil erodibility factor. L S is the topographic factor. L is slope length. and s is steepness together it is known as topographic factor c is cover and management factor and p is the support practice factor so this equation helps in predicting the average annual soil loss from erosion in specific areas so it considers all these factors erosivity erodibility slope length steepness land cover and conservation practices erosion is a function of erosivity of rain and erodibility of soil the amount of erosion depends on this combination the power or the ability of rainfall to cause erosion and ability of soil to withstand that erosion so it's a function of erosivity and erodibility erosivity is the ability of rain to cause erosion whereas erodibility is the vulnerability or susceptibility of soil to get eroded to conserve soil and water we may implement vegetative or mechanical measures or we may implement both of them by planting fast growing crops like legumes and grasses during fallow periods or after harvest we can protect the soil from erosion we should not leave the land barren otherwise it is susceptible to erosion wind breaks and shelter belts by planting rows of trees or shrubs perpendicular to the prevailing wind direction we can considerably reduce the effect of wind and thereby we can protect the vulnerable areas by applying sod or grass mats on barren lands bare slopes or other disturbed areas we can establish immediate cover and thereby we can help in reducing the loss of soil So what are the objectives of erosion control The objectives are to minimize the exposure of soil by using cover crops or mulching and to maintain vegetation on slopes in order to stabilize the soil We may need to implement mechanical or engineering measures to conserve soil and water we may use contour burns graded burns and bench terraces what are contour burns they are horizontal ridges which are constructed across the slopes and along the contour to control the flow of water and prevent erosion it will significantly reduce the velocity of overland flow graded burns they are used for disposing excess water so these are gradually sloping ridges which are constructed to dispose surplus amount of water and then we have bench terraces so a hilly land is constructed into bench like platforms so step like structures on steep slopes uh, which are constructed for reducing erosion and promoting farming are bench terraces The surplus amount of water from the agricultural lands can be collected and disposed safely using a waterway. This vegetated waterway is called grass waterway. It is designed to carry water and reduce erosion. It helps in directing the runoff and it also helps in reducing the velocity of runoff. It prevents formation of 
gullies in the agricultural lands so triangular trapezoidal and parabolic shapes of grass waterways are available most natural grass waterways will be parabolic in shape these waterways can help in stabilizing the soil it will reduce the formation of gullies and it will also protect the nearby water bodies from sedimentation we can use various rainwater harvesting methods to conserve water we may construct a pond we may construct a roof rainwater harvesting system or we may construct some burns to promote infiltration and improve the groundwater recharge so these measures conserve water resources by capturing rain for various uses it provides an additional reliable water source especially in regions which face water scarcity it helps in minimizing the runoff and prevents the soil erosion and flooding it also helps in diverting the rain water and uh, promoting ground water replenishment so it can be used for crop irrigation and uh, this will reduce the dependence on conventional water sources what are the major outcomes of soil and water conservation engineering course first outcome is you will gain expertise in erosion control techniques and strategies to prevent soil loss and to manage the sediment runoff you will have the capability to design and implement erosion control structures such as terraces grass waterways and check dams to manage the flow of water and reduce erosion risk effectively you will acquire the proficiency in sustainable land management practices balancing agricultural productivity with environmental preservation in you will also gain knowledge of water resource conservation including rainwater harvesting and groundwater recharge methods